Hi right, guys, we're back at Smash Fishing. We got Sam with us today. Hey. We got big baits, big hooks, the crab wheel, and the pot. So stay tuned. We're on a mission. It's Smash Fishing. Woo! We've only got a few things to carry down with us today. <laughs> got quite a lot, eh, mate? We've always got a lot. Yeah, for sure. We've got two rods each. We've got the wheel, two buckets of bait, a bag of food, and a good old crab pot. Hopefully, we can get lucky with a nice lobster. If we get anything decent tonight to eat for a catch and cook, uh, we'll save it till tomorrow. We'll have a nice cook up. We made it in one piece. Just about. Just about. <laughs> So what we're going to do now is get the crab pot out and we'll pick this up at the end of the session and the crab wheels we're going to be picking up every 20 minutes and we got a load of all the uh, second hand conga bait and that's what we're going to be loading them all up with so we'll get to that now and we'll show you the rigs and stuff that we're going to be fishing with good old knife what we got in this crab pot you guys have probably seen before we've we got one bait there one here and one here we like to have three baits in there. It's a nice chunk of a mackerel here. We just undo the wire and get it threaded on. Last time we had congas come in this and rip the bait out. So we're hoping we have a load of heads in here and stuff. And the other bait I've got, once I can get this in. There we go, so that's the bait there. And it's right on the side of the entrances, so the lobsters have to come right in. And the other bait we got is a bag of bluey. So what I'm going to do with this is instead of taking them out of the packet, I'm just going to stab a load of holes in. And I'm going to mush this up, breaking all the guts and stuff. And then it's like a big shervy bag, where if an eel does go inside of this, it's not just going to take the bait and disappear. got here a big old chunk of cuttlefish like i said before this is all old conga bait we always keep it we don't waste anything so anything you see us catch on this channel we always use a hundred percent of it to try and catch something else to eat and good thing about cuttlefish this is very hard to rip off the wire right get in here uh, eventually a conga will get trapped in this that's what we're hoping for, eh, Sam? Yeah. And hopefully, we can get a nice nice lobster sometime. But we're using tough baits, because there's eels down here. And as I said, they ripped it off the wire. So we're coming back for vengeance, baby. It's on. The old twister room, eh? Yeah, better safe than sorry. Yes, eh? <laughs> I'd rather it be a tangled mess than to lose the crab pot. Right, so what we're doing, guys, We've got a really big sash weight on the bottom of this. And as you can see, all the baits in. If someone wants to come in a bit closer there, mate. We've got our bag of bluey, we've got our mackerel head, and our cuttlefish. So hopefully, this will get us something good. A little lob. Just secure the rope a little bit, just in case. <laughs> Don't trust those carabiners. Nah, that's it, eh? That's it, and all it is, Booyah, and we're fishing. Hopefully, we get some nice big lobsters. Hell yeah! So I'm there getting the wheel ready. Loaded up with some fresh pink squid. Old dirty conga bait. It's disgusting. We're not putting any cameras in the wheels today because it's going to get dark soon. It's going to be a beautiful sunset, eh mate? Yeah, it's looking good. Yeah, I can't wait. Oh, it's going to be brilliant thing about springtime you get all the big orange sunset and it looks absolutely beautiful let's go get some lobsters where's those lobsters sam right there right there <laughs> what we got at the moment it's low tide coming up high tides at midnight i think eh, mate uh almost two o'clock i think yeah oh was it oh one, past yeah. midnight then we're gonna be out and hopefully we can catch a fish before two o'clock <laughs> You know it's a long fishing sesh when we got a big bag of food. <laughs> and the rig I'm using today guys, I'm going to have one conga rig out and uh, one up and over. Just because we've got some nice little uh, squid in the bucket here. 
perfect baits, eh? I did. So what we've got is perfect six inch squids. Then we've got fresh packets of mackerel for the eels. And hopefully between the up and over rig and the conga rigs, we can pull up a couple of fish. We're not after anything special today. We're just out for a laugh and hopefully get something cool. And all the conga rigs are is 200 pound trace to a, a, a big barrel swivel, 8.0 mustard hook and a small breakaway so we can lose the lead. What I like to do for the bait for the congas guys is get a nice fish popsicle. I think everyone knows we barely ever defrost our bait anymore. <laughs> and all I'm doing is just going to chop it in half or two thirds of it and I'm going to go straight under the throat latch and then straight out the top of the head and that's all you need for eels you don't need nothing special no bait elastic uh, there's, there's a lot of ways of baiting up mackerel but this way we find we don't gut hook them so much but those big eels sometimes it's inevitable way mate yeah might have to put one in the oven <laughs> with congas you really don't have to cast far at all most of them are in the holes right underneath piers lighthouses all that you don't have to go out far unless there's a big reef out there with gullies in and stuff then uh it's all good but just a little flick i'm probably six yards or six feet from the uh wall there you know straight down the side and that is it on my 13 footer i'm gonna use the up and over rig it's got 80 pound rig body and 80 pound trace to two size 6.0 Aberdeen hooks, really strong hooks these ones. And how I like to bait my squid, it's just to go in through the top, come down, then about an inch from the head, go in, and then finish off through the head. And that will just keep it all nicely in place. Doesn't help that these are slightly frozen. <laughs> As always, we never time our fishing, so we just go randomly. That's why the bait's frozen a lot of the time. And what we're gonna do is just use a bit of bait elastic, mainly around the eye of the hook, because we don't want the hook pulling through. There we go. A little bit more on there. Beautiful. And then what you do is get your panel hook, come down, to the top of the bait and you go one two three and you go in and back out again beautiful and that there is a nice streamlined bait lots of hook exposure and any sort of species would eat this cod ray bass anything smooth hound so hopefully we can get one of those tonight but we're probably going to catch a dogfish <laughs> Beautiful, nice little punch out. Let's catch a dogfish. And there you go again, guys. The good old tripods. <laughs> <laughs> I was on a roll for a bit. What's that, three weeks since I broke one? Yeah, that's probably the longest you've ever got. That's typical. <laughs> <laughs> this is the lighthouse in Guernsey. There's White Rock. Just showing you a bit of the scenery while I'm at it. And we got Herm, Sark over there. Great view from here. And there's Sam the cameraman. Kiwi! Kiwi! Getting a woof woof bite from a dogfish. caught a fish in ages. Feels strange, <laughs> eh? Huh? Feels strange. Ah, it's doggy, I think, mate. <laughs> Dead weight. If you watch, I'm bullying it up, it'd be a cod or something. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, guys. First fish of the night. It's a woof woof. Pain in the backside for most anglers. But we're going to eat this one. This one's coming home for tea. 
Welcome, little surprise that, little dogfish. Get quite a lot of these round here and they taste amazing. So what I'll do tomorrow is keep this in the fridge and I'll uh, skin it and I'll show you how I like to cook this. This is delicious. All I'm doing is keeping it in the bait bucket. Sam's gonna check the wheel for the second time. First one we had seaweed. Just going around the lighthouse. Give it a heave, mate. Get those lobsters. <laughs> oh no, it's over there. <laughs> Go on, Sam, use those guns. Nothing? And that's it. Nothing in there. Bit of kelp. There's still time. Oh no. Oh, Here you have, what's that? Doggy. You got a doggy in the conga trace again. <laughs> there we go guys. That's a big doggy as well. Oh look, it's not even hooked. There you go, he's off. Look at that. That's a dogfish. Same as what we had before. Evil little buggers. <laughs> he's trying to bite me. Member of the shark family. They're actually a cat shark. But, um, yeah, they're pretty harmless. Best way to hold them is by the head. If you just bring the tail round, and then they can't sandpaper your hand. It's a lot easier. Right set of little gnashes on them. <laughs> Since this one wasn't hooked, we're gonna put it back. It's a lovely sized doggy, that though, Sam. Yeah. Really nice, mate. And the same bait goes back down to catch the yeah. fish. Look at the eye on that. Evil. Sam's got another fish on. What do you reckon it is, Sam? Probably a dogfish. Woof, woof. woof, woof. <laughs> what we'll do is this one is pretty well hooked. So we keep that one for the catch and cook as well. Sam can take it off the hook. Okay. <laughs> do you want to give the folks a show? Surprise catch that. It's a woof, woof. It's a woof, woof. <laughs> Hell yeah. Sam's got him out. There you go. He's bleeding quite a lot, this fish. So it's going to be perfect for the catch and cook. We only wanted two just to fry up. Oh God. <laughs> Look how swallowed that is. This is the problem with dogfish guys. If you don't see them on the hook, that's a panel rig as far down his gullet as you're ever going to get. So this one's going to come home for tea as well. Because by the time I got this out, this fish is just going to bleed out. So this one's going to get banged on the head, thrown in the bucket, and get another bait on. There you go, nothing new. A wolf wolf bite from a dogfish. There you go. It's a lesser spotted dogfish or cat shark. And they taste amazing. We've got three now, so we don't want any more. Hopefully we don't catch any more gut hooked. And like we say, to unhook them, just hold the tail up near the head, pop the hook out. There you go. You've got some nice bellies on these ones, eh? Yeah. Really fat. And back to live another day, baby. Hopefully Sam can pull up Larry. Mr. Larry. Big Grandma Larry. Oh, look at the speed. Feel like there's 10 pound lobster in it? Nope. Oh, there's something in that. What's in it? Brown crab. Oh, <laughs> we actually got something. <laughs> hey. Look at that, guys. That's what you call a little baby weed brown crab. Or shanker. About time we had something in this, eh, mate? Nice to see something, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> There you go, not big enough to keep, not by a long way. So all we're gonna do is bait it up, we'll throw it back out, and hopefully get something cool. Just pulled up the wheel for the last time, and there is a little baby velvet swimming crab. The last thing to pull up, now all the rods are up, is the uh, crab pot. So we got high hopes for that. One little velvet crab, no good. No lobsters, but we have fun all the same. Hopefully we can make, redeem this whole trip with a lobster. 
So what are you saying, Jay? What? What are you saying? Big lobster. Big lobster. What are you saying? Big lobster. I hope. <laughs> yeah, I hope. We're praying, mate. We're praying. Alright, let's go. How's it feel? Heavy? Yeah, it always feels heavy. <laughs> Come on. Come. Jay's pulled the pot up. That is a big eel. The battery died, guys, but check this out. <laughs> the size of that. It. And a spider in there as well. That's a fat old eel, that. We expected one eventually, eh? Yeah. But look at that eel. And we couldn't even catch one on the rod. No. We thought there was none here, eh? Big female spider there. These are coming in now. So in the next well couple of months or months month or so these will be in in full force we're not going to eat this one we don't eat the females as you can tell by the circular apron just there that's where they carry their eggs so we don't want this baby she can go back breed for the future i'll see if i can tail this one out do it this way there we go Look at that for an eel, mate. <laughs> That's a whopper. <laughs> I can't believe we got that. No lobster. Yeah, look, he chewed up the bag. That's what re I reckon stole our bait last time. Definitely, yeah. Look at that. All right, come here. There you go, guys. Lovely size eel. What I'll do is just take, take my head torch off, give you a proper show. There we go. The trick with congers is to hold them very steady. Just like that. Look at that for an eel. What a fatty, eh, Sal? Yeah. <laughs> In the crab pot, we've been fishing for five hours straight, caught nothing but dogfish, and we get a big eel in the crab pot. Look at the tail on that thing. What a monster. I won't keep him out too long, guys. This one hasn't been hooked or anything, so it's going to go back nicely. We're going to get a few pictures. We get a lovely release. What a beauty! Here we go. We got a few pictures, guys. You don't want to get bitten by an eel this lively. We we'll take a nice old chunk out of you. So there you go. One last show, just to be a little bit of a show off. <laughs> Hell yeah! We're a bit shocked that we actually got this in the crab pot. That's mad. So what we're going to do, getting back now, he's got a full stomach, full of mackerel and cuttlefish, bluey, you name it, look at that head. Hell yeah. Shame it's not a conga wars. <laughs> back in the kitchen now, guys. We've got our two dogfish. We put one in the freezer for pot bait because it was a bit small. And with dogfish, you want quite, quite more of the fatter ones. And how we like to uh, skin these is get all of the fins off. All you're doing is just cutting straight up. Just like that. You want a very sharp knife for this. I'll keep that fin there for now. And what this does is causes a lot less drag when you go to skin it. So there you go, there's his top fins off. And with the bottom, you've got the stomach cavity. So what I like to do is get hold of the back fins and then cut straight up. Just like so. Working your way along the meat line. Just to the head. Then same the other side. Just to the head. And what you're doing is you're creating a V towards the head because there's a lot of meat actually up into the head here and that's the thicker part just like so and then where your skin meets the uh, meat here you want to go underneath the skin just like that get a nice little flap on the go and sometimes you can pull it by hand there we go, just started, but easiest way, pair of pliers, get a good grip on it, and then start peeling. 
there we go. Once you've got it started, you can get your hands on it. There we go, just to the end there. Cut that part off. There we go, cut the tail off. And you got one lovely piece of meat. Sam having a go at skinning a dogfish. Looking good for your first time, dude. The skin is so tough. It's surprisingly hard to get off, eh? Mm. Yeah, so he's nearly there. So we get this finished now, get onto it. What we're doing now, guys, there's our nice fresh meat. Perfect, ready to go. And all we're doing is having about three inch chunks. So, just like that. Measure them out. So we've got four chunks, and look at the white meat inside of that. Absolutely delicious. And what we're doing now is we've got our chunk. I'm going to give it a dip in the egg into the flour to give it a good coat in the flour. Get everything nicely covered. And we go into the egg again. And then straight into our breadcrumbs. Beautiful. And there we go. Good tip with breadcrumb is just to uh, leave it in the breadcrumb for a minute. We just had a phone call, and there you go. Perfectly coated all the way round. Looks a bit like a chicken nugget. <laughs> <laughs> so, what we're going to do, Sam's going to get his hands dirty as well. We'll get both of these all breadcrumbed up, and we'll show you the next step. Sam the chef man. I'm no chef, trust me. That looks great, mate. What you want to do, the idea of this is getting it perfectly coated all the way round, and you get a really good crunch when you bite into them. Hell yeah. There you go, guys. Well coated. Look a bit like Kentucky Fried Chicken. <laughs> uh, a way to test if your oil's perfect or not, just get a little bit of the breadcrumb, drop it in, and if it's not sizzling really hard, and it's just coming up to a nice heat like that, that is perfect. So all we do for these is be nice and gentle, straight in the pan. And that's all it is. You want to cook them fairly slowly like this, because you're only putting them in the oven for a few minutes just to cook the middle. And you don't want to burn the breadcrumbs. That's a nice golden brown now. What we're doing is just transferring them into the tray. And then these will be put in the oven for only five minutes, just to make sure they're cooked right in the middle. And it, what it does is it takes a lot of the grease out as well. And then they end up really firm meat inside. And as you can see already, that meat is pure white. It's like gold. And all we're doing, straight in the oven, baby. I'm going to give the guys a close-up. That's what they look like when they come out of the oven, guys. Perfectly crispy. Oh. Oh. Tuck in, mate. Smells good. It smells delicious, eh? Haven't had this in a little while. There we go, guys. Perfectly golden brown. See what Sam thinks. First time you tried them like this, eh? Mm -hmm. mm. That's good. That's real good. Mm. Hot. Very hot. And there you go. See how white and flaky the flesh is? And all you do is just eat round the bone and you won't get any sort of little bones in between. Have you had one yet? No. No at all. Mmm. Wow, hot. Very hot. Mm. You notice how meaty they go when you put them in the oven for five minutes. I'm actually quite surprised how much meat there is on this. Yeah, like four of these will fill you up. Mm. Oh, for sure. We could do much. And what we got, I bet yeah, we was doing. 
But what we've got here, a bit of sweet chilli sauce. We wish we had a fresh lemon, but we don't have any. But we're not complaining. Mmm. Makes you think every time you catch one, it's like, oh. <laughs> Start keeping more. Yeah. Mmm. <laughs> Look at that meat, perfect. Can't forget the brick one though. Mmm. That is good. Yeah, it's really hot though. Mega hot. Yeah. So I won't leave you any longer guys. That's all the uh, fish cooked up. Give you a little show there. Absolutely awesome way to cook dog fish. The fish and chip shops used to cook it with batter. I think it was called rock salmon or yeah, something like that, eh? Yeah. And it really is amazing. So if you want to check out Sam's Instagram page, the link's always in the description. If you like my channel, like and subscribe. This was a fun trip, eh, dude? It was a really good trip. Yeah, man. surprise conga. <laughs> it's smash fishing. Woo! Oh, so meaty. Mmm. Meaty. Mmm. Busted, mate. You're going in the video. <laughs>